Hi, I'm Russ Briault with the Shroud of Turin Education Project, and welcome to the Shroud Report. And today my guest is historian Dan Scavoni. Dan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Russ. Well, I'm a, really glad to be here. Well, it's Thank a pleasure you. to have you. And uh, Dan is a longtime researcher on the Shroud. I've been studying it for at least 20 years. And um, now, now, Dan, today we, we could, there's so much to talk about with the history of the Shroud and where it's been over its, over its long history. And, and, uh, but but your, your area of Shroud history that, that, that you're focusing on now is, is this very curious relationship, or a, should I say a possible relationship, yeah. between the Shroud of Turin and the Holy Grail. And that's fascinating. Actually, I stumbled upon it. I got interested in King Arthur um, and the Grail. I began reading the uh, major Arthurian legends. There are about six or seven major ones and a lot of offshoots, spin-offs. And uh, I started to notice some relationships. And uh, it, it, it may, mainly uh, revolves around the person of Joseph of Arimathea. So... Now, now, Joseph is the biblical character. The biblical character. That, that now from my history, if I recollect this right, Joseph was the was the man, at least related to the shroud, who exactly. actually purchased the shroud exactly. that Jesus was wrapped in. Yeah. And 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 okay. Well, as you say, and as as I, I suppose everyone knows, um, Joseph is not in the New Testament until Good Friday. Uh, he comes out of the woodwork. He makes a cameo appearance. Um, all of uh, Jesus' friends, relations, disciples are afraid. They're gone. Mary, his mother, is beside herself. So who's going to take care of the burial? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I'm, I'm putting this into simplistic terms. Sure. But, um, here comes Joseph. He's a rich man. Uh, some people even think he had been the uncle of Mary. Oh. I don't know how, in what way, but anyhow, it's, that's a later interpolation. Uh, anyway, he comes and he's bought a cloth. It's a, a standard type of burial cloth for Jews of the time of Christ. And uh, he takes Jesus down from the cross, and, he, and he's also got a tomb nearby Golgotha, where the cross was. Mm -hmm. and he it's actually puts, his, his tomb that he had... It's his family tomb. The family tomb, okay. Yeah. It hasn't been used yet. So he uh, wraps Jesus in the cloth and he puts him in the tomb and then bye-bye, we don't see him anymore. But for some reason, this Joseph is one of the hit stars <laughs> of the apocryphal literature that follows the, that follows the New Testament now, now chronologically. What, what is apocryphal yeah, mean? It means taken from being hidden, coming out from being hidden. It, it's a a large a body of literature, I, could, I would bet you would find 2,000 pages mm -hmm. of literature uh, that comes from different parts of the Middle East, Alexandria, um, Coptic, Coptic texts, uh, Syria, um, Eastern Turkey, and so forth. Coptic uh, uh, meaning Armenia, Egyptian, right? Cop Coptic, okay. Christian, Egyptian. Okay. Armenia, for example. And uh, all this literature is either a, a takeoff on the New Testament, well it is, and then it embellishes. Mm -hmm. And it embellishes sometimes in fantastic ways, uh, stories that, of miracles that are even more miraculous than the New Testament miracles. And also um, it sometimes adds historical details that if you're, if you're looking for them, they're very important. In any case, we don't need to find the historical details here. We just need to u see what's in the apocryphal books. Uh, they date from the same time as the New Testament, maybe mm -hmm. the, uh, a late first century all the way to the sixth century. Mm -hmm. And they became part of a Christian literature. Um, and as you may know, sometime in the second century, um, a group of Orthodox uh, church fathers came together and hammered out, so to speak, that canon of 27 or so books of the New Testament. They excluded many for unorthodox doctrines by, by the second century. Christianity's necessary teachings were in place, and the books that they included in the New Testament naturally had to not, not it could not have deviated from the orthodox. Mm -hmm. So, but then all the rest became apocryphal. 
Some of them were hounded out, went into hiding, only to be revealed to us today or mm -hmm. you know, over the centuries. What are, what are some of the names of these apocryphal works? Uh, well, there's a body of apocrypha surrounding the, uh, the um, disciple Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, the doubting Thomas. There's a body, a large body, uh, surrounding uh, John, the beloved. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Gospel of Peter. There's an Acts of John, a Gospel of John, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so um, those are the sorts of things. And, and they, they relate to the New Testament, but then they, em they embellish and, uh, and add, they add new things. So it's in this literature, Joseph of Arimathea, who has, I don't know, two verses or two, a chapter or two in, in, in the four Gospels, uh, he comes to the fore and he becomes a star. So uh, Joseph uh, is captured by the Jews. Now, this one's called the Gospel of Nicodemus. Okay. And it's been dated by different scholars from the 2nd to the 6th century. It's an apocryphal book. So in this book, Joseph is captured by the Jews because he was a Christian. And he's thrown into a cell. And when he's in his cell, um, Jesus, who either has already resurrected, probably has already resurrected, comes to him and enters. And Joseph says, who are you? And Jesus says, don't you know who I am? Come on, I'll show you the tomb where you placed me and the shroud that you laid me in. This is already after mm -hmm. the New Testament. One of the early texts that, that makes the shroud important. And, and he shows Joseph these things and Joseph says, you're, you're the Lord, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like, duh. And um, so then um, after Je uh, Jesus then teaches him the secrets of the faith, we don't know what that is, what mm -hmm. that meant, because the faith is the faith, okay. And uh, then angels come and lift the, the, the room up by all four corners, and Joseph strolls out, and when the Jews come back the next day, they find that, he, he's not there, right. and, and Caiaphas is still standing there with the key. Everything is locked. So it's a Caiaphas, real mystery. which you know. is the high priest at that time. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. okay. So this is really a mystery for them. They find him in his house. So they, now they wonder. What Nicodemus they find in his no, house. No, Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea, yeah. okay. Find him in his house. And he tells him the story. And all of a sudden, they, they got more respect for him. <laughs> and, of course, they... Uh, I guess some of them must go into a conversion mode, you know, and, and realize that Jesus is uh, something like the real thing. But that's the uh, Gospel of uh, Nicodemus. Okay. So now, when I read the...